I had to kill the first uh, show open, so we just have one story. 20. 15. Send by W out to Sotbo and A. Here we go. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Open door. Live from WTKR News 3. Your news at 10 starts right now. Personally, I struggle at school because the teachers don't know. Local teens taking action to protect themselves in school. Their hard work could help other students across the state. Welcome to News 3 at 10 o'clock on WGNT. I'm Beverly Hitt. And I'm Kurt Williams. Thanks for joining us tonight. We're going to start tonight. Continue foggy conditions over Hampton Roads. Be careful out there if you have to get out. You see that thick fog in the view over Norfolk? This dense fog is expected to make another appearance in the morning. Chief Meteorologist Patrick Rocky in the First Warning Weather Center. And Patrick, I stepped up tonight and it is thick out there. It is thick and it is widespread. You know, a lot of times you get just patchy dense fog. It is really widespread tonight across most of the area. Let's take a look at the numbers right now because you can see we're down to one to a mile visibility right now in Virginia Beach. Things have improved in some of our inland locations where we were down below a mile visibility. Oh, we are below a mile visibility yes. across Albemarle, eight tenths in Elizabeth Eight City, Eleven. about a half mile visibility 30. right now in Edenton. We're just three tenths of a mile visibility in Moyoc. Same story for Jackson, North Carolina. So it's coming and going, but yeah, we got some dense fog. Thankfully, we don't have the rain that we had this morning. Man, oh man, we had some heavy downpour. Some of us saw two plus inches of rain. Looks like we're done with the rain. We are not done with the fog, though. We're going to have that for tomorrow morning. And so even if you don't have some where you live, you may run into some on the drive to work. So be really careful for tomorrow He's morning with that dense traffic. fog. So it is going to be widespread. We expect in some areas visibilities below a quarter mile. We'll start off the day with temperatures around the 50 degree mark. Big weather changes to talk about a plunge in temperatures and maybe some snow this weekend. That's coming up in your seven day forecast. Stinger. Well, tonight the fight over Second Amendment rights continues in another Hampton Road city as supporters of gun rights continue to argue against gun bills in Richmond. News 3 reporter Julio Avila is at Portsmouth City Council meeting where dozens signed up to take to the podium tonight. Yep, yeah, package. A crowded council chamber inside the Portsmouth City Hall. A majority of the people with these orange stickers were here to talk about a hot topic on the agenda, the Second Amendment. Tonight is about supporting not only the Second really Amendment, but ten. all of our rights. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. These rights are right, natural rights. They are God-given. No They're not given by man. Something that no man can take them away. Mm -hmm. Les Gilliam was at City Hall since 5 o'clock, two hours before the meeting started. Other residents, such as Sandra Walsh, came later this evening. Just like World War II, we were discussing tonight. They came for somebody else and nobody helped, and they came for somebody else and then nobody helped, and then they came for us and there was nobody there, and I want to be there. She says her granddaughter is expecting a child soon and says speaking up will help preserve the rights she and others enjoy now for her future great-grandchild. If I get a seat, I will stay. Even at my advanced stage, I still have a voice. I'm not giving up. Those who couldn't get a seat gathered outside the council chambers on the sixth floor. They also gathered on the first floor where they watched the meeting on television monitors. A handout from a representative for Councilman Nathan Clark stated, he is a supporter of Second Amendment rights. The newly proposed gun legislation for the state of Virginia is ludicrous. The legislation will make criminals 30? of lawful citizens and gun owners. Clark had his rifle strapped across his chest at tonight's meeting. It could be seen briefly when people stood for the Pledge of Allegiance. His statement aligning with the reasons we've heard from people as to why they're here. That's why you see thousands of people at these city council meetings all over the state coming out in opposition to this because people are not going to comply with unconstitutional laws. In Portsmouth, Julio Avila, News 3. A cancer causing material found in a Hampton firehouse and now that station is temporarily shut down. The city says asbestos was found Thursday in old floor tiles of Fire Station 7 on Fox Hill Road. The station is 53 years old. Exposure can increase risk of developing lung disease or even cancer. The entire building is closed so that further tests can be done. In the meantime, firefighters are working out of two different neighboring stations about 10 minutes away. As for the safety of the residents, the city doesn't believe the response times will be significantly impacted.
Uh, in some cases, those firefighters are actually closer to areas that were served by Station 7. And in other cases, they might be a little bit further away. But in all cases, we feel that we have the area covered. You know, we have the same number of firefighters working to cover the area. The city says it cannot determine right now when the station will reopen until the test results show just how extensive the problem is. So two local teens are on track to make history in Virginia. Backed by local legislators Jimmy Van Cleve and Bree Gason created a bill to make seizure safe schools across the Commonwealth. Reporter Aaron Miller tells us about the Jamie and Bree Strong Act. Yep, package. Jamie Van Cleve had her first seizure when she was seven years old. I had like 70, 60 or so in day one. Bree Giesick was also seven years old. It was really scary because I didn't know what was happening. But what makes them different from everyone else brings them together. And then I found out that I had epilepsy. Epilepsy is a neurological disorder that causes sudden seizures. When they'll take over is a mystery. If there's like no one around you that knows how to deal with it, you're, it's even scarier because you don't know what they're going to try to do to help. Personally, I struggle at school because the teachers don't know. For that reason, they've created a bill sponsored by Senator Bill Steff to make students with epilepsy safer in school. If it passes, all school personnel will be trained to recognize and respond to seizures. Administrators will also be given authority to administer approved medication. If someone is there um, that knows what to do when you have a seizure, you feel more relaxed and more protected especially when the majority of their day is spent at school. Virginia would then join five other states who have passed seizure safe school legislation. If you think about what you're doing and you're like, wow, this is helping a lot of people. On top of charting Virginia's future, they're both honor roll students. Jamie is also an app horseback rider and Bree dominates the soccer field, showing nothing can hold them back only move them forward. But then I have Bree and we really can get through this together because we have similar situations. In Norfolk, Aaron Miller News 3. Stinger music. They had accused of impersonating an FBI agent. The run-in he allegedly had with an elderly couple in Virginia Beach and where he is now. Yep. Plus 10,000 gallons of jet fuel raining down on Los Angeles. Dozens of people sickened how a large disa a larger disaster was averted. Up. Well, today's rain has come to an end and something else is going to be falling this weekend. Will it be rain? Will it be snow? We'll have the latest forecast models coming up. That's good. Eight months since the mass shooting in Virginia Stand Beach, the city is still dealing with the aftermath of the tragedy. Today, city council members got an update from city staff about the response to the shooting. They say more jobs are vacant than in the past because more city employees retired after the mass shooting. Also, nearly 500 workers have filed workers' compensation claims, totaling almost $3 million in payouts. But the greatest impact continues to be on the workers themselves. Uh, we're in disillusionment. That's where we are. Uh, people are getting better, uh, but uh, everybody gets triggers, and uh, as soon as they get a trigger, something happens to them. Uh, so they they slow down. Uh, they have to go home. The acting city manager also says city leaders are planning several events in May to honor the shooting victims and survivors. White. An elderly woman was knocked to the ground, her husband assaulted in Virginia Beach by a man Senior claiming to be an FBI teams. agent. That's according to police. 43-year-old Alex Carlins is charged with impersonating a police officer and assault. It happened on Hilltop Road back on January 9th. A woman tells police that she questioned Carlins because he didn't look like he belonged in the neighborhood. He's accused of telling her he was an FBI agent and that, he, that she was under arrest. When the woman's husband came outside, police say Carlin's assaulted the man. Carlin's is being held without bond. Stinger. Well, dozens of people yeah. potentially exposed to jet fuel, how an emergency in the air okay. turned into an emergency on the ground. Let's go. 10, stand by. 
five, three, two, one, they're up, my cue. A jumbo jet bound for China was forced to make an emergency landing shortly after takeoff in Los Angeles today. Yeah, but as it descended, it apparently dumped its fuel over a very busy neighborhood near schools. Cell phone video reportedly shows the fuel dumped near schools Somebody where dozens of people were treated for minor injuries. Danya Bacchus reports. Hey, up, package. Why are they dumping it? Emergency crews raced to a Southern California elementary it's school it's fearing the worst. Huh? Park Avenue relies on the approach pass to Los Angeles sense. International Jeez, like Airport. A city? Delta <laughs> Airlines Boeing 777 Jeez. bound for Shanghai and loaded back. with fuel had just yeah. taken off. Heading, we have uh, engine compressor stalls on the right engine. We're requesting runway 25 right. The pilot declared an emergency, circled to land, and on final approach dumped fuel, some of it raining down on the school playground. The FAA is Sorry. investigating this incident because there are special procedures for dumping fuel over a major city. I was so scared, so we just went inside. And then my eyes are itchy. This video is believed to be that Delta plane Early as it neared LAX. Days. The Ten airline standby. confirms the Ten plane standby. experienced an engine issue and had an emergency fuel release Ten to nine, reduce seven, landing eight, weight. Four. Don Yabakis, CBS News, Los Angeles. Protecting the United States and deployed forces from missile attacks, a government watchdog has some recommendations. This is a very real threat, they say. Just last week, Iran launched ballistic missiles with two into two Iraqi bases housing U.S. troops. No American or Iraqi lives were lost because of the precautions taken, the dispersal of forces, very well. and an early warning system that worked very well. The Missile Defense Agency is tasked with protecting the United States and allies from ballistic missile attacks. A report from the Government Accountability Office says uh, wants the agency to collaborate more with the intelligence community to keep pace with evolving threats. Segment. Here's your first warning storm team forecast with Chief Meteorologist Patrick Rocky. Well, we started the day with showers and thunderstorms. We're ending the day with this dense fog, although you can see over in Norfolk, the fog has lifted a bit. It's been coming and going. The rain, though, is going for the most part. Just a slight chance we could see a few more showers tomorrow late afternoon and evening so this is an hour by hour just a 10 percent chance for wet weather early on 20 percent chance for some rain by the mid and late afternoon hours and into the evening for tomorrow we've got a big drop in temperatures on the way it's going to be getting much colder for the next few days you can see our forecast beginning friday through next tuesday Keep in mind, normal high temperature this time of the year is around 48. We have been well, well, well above normal for most of the month. We're going to be a little bit below normal on Friday at 43. 52, slightly above normal on Saturday. Upper 40s on Sunday, near normal. And then look at this, highs only in the upper 30s for Martin Luther King Day on Monday and into Tuesday. Of course, one of the ingredients for snow is cold air. We're going to have plenty of that on Saturday morning. It's just a question of the timing for the moisture on the way, and our two main long-range models are telling us two completely different things. The GFS forecast model is bringing in moisture pretty early, and that means we could be dealing with that messy mix of rain, sleet, and snow on Saturday morning. This is 9 a.m. 9 a.m. with a European forecast model, not a thing falling from the skies, just some clouds around. So it's all going to depend on what happens with a storm system that hasn't even developed yet. And so we're watching that very closely. We expect it to develop in Texas over the next couple of days and move uh, basically up through the Midwest. Right now we have a stationary front across the area. Of course, it's been bringing us clouds, it's been bringing us rain, but right now we've got mainly dry conditions out there. I say dry, but you know we've got probably some mist and drizzle here and there. We've definitely got the fog out there. As we take you overnight and toward tomorrow morning, we do expect areas of dense fog once again tomorrow morning and a lot more widespread than we've had the past couple of days. That will finally burn off as we head to late morning hours, and then we'll, there'll be some sunshine as we head through the day tomorrow. Likely seeing more fog, though, along the coast as we head into the afternoon 30, and evening hours 30, for tomorrow. 30. Skies clear as we head into Thursday. Winds pick up and flip around to the north and the northwest. That's going to be driving in much colder air, and so, yep, temperatures are going to be dropping as we head into Friday, so it's going to be a chilly day. And on Saturday morning, we're going to have some cold air. Some of us, especially inland, will be down into the 20s. And then the moisture starts to move in. So 7 o'clock on Saturday morning, yep, that's snow out toward I-95. This is the GFS forecast model. 
And then we see that moisture move into Hampton Roads and we could be dealing with that messy mix before it changes over to all rain. Really depends on the timing of the moisture moving in. And you see in our seven day forecast here, we've got dry conditions and mild conditions for the next few days. The big question mark on Saturday morning, likely no question on Sunday, it's gonna be dry and colder. And then much colder as we head toward Monday and Tuesday of next week. Ooh, it really is going to cool down. That's yes. pretty significant. Yeah, it is. It's 60 tomorrow, 61 on Thursday. Yep, and then temperatures drop. Uh -huh. Okay. Thank you. Stinger. Major changes for an NFL team in our region, and one move could impact a major college program. That news coming up. Plus, yep. while playing in Hawaii, how Virginia Beach pro golfer Mark Leishman was able to make an impact in Australia. That story next in your Chevrolet Sports Report. Good. stories all linked to the NFL's Carolina Panthers. Up first, citing health concerns. Panthers star linebacker Luke Keekley has retired at the age of 28. This means Keekley yeah. will not play for new Panthers head coach Matt Rule, hired by Carolina last week after leaving Baylor University. And according to Yahoo Sports, Virginia Tech head coach Justin Fuente, the leading candidate to replace Rule at Baylor. One more Carolina connection for you. Joe Brady, the William & Mary alumnus, he's going to be the Panthers' new Ooh. offensive coordinator and at 30 years old will be the youngest coordinator in the NFL. All right, to golf now. Last weekend, Virginia Beach pro golfer Mark Leishman played in his first tournament of the calendar year. Now, he could play the rest of his life and never make such an impact by finishing tied for 28th place. Yeah, package. Mark Leishman. A week spent with his family in Hawaii was not all sunshine and rainbows for pro golfer Mark Leishman. There. Yes, it wasn't quite the week I was after. And no, not just because Mother Nature delivered a soaking from more than just the crashing waves in the Pacific Ocean. Honolulu did not make for much of an escape because it was impossible for Leishman, a Virginia Beach resident who was a native of Australia, to escape the devastation from bushfires in his home country. A lot of people have lost their lives, lost their homes, um, countless number of animals that have that haven't made it. Um, so yeah, my family is fine, but um, you know Australia's suffering pretty hard at the moment. So Leishman, 115, 28th ranked golfer in the world, while competing in the PGA Tour Sony Open in Hawaii last week, decided he'd be playing for more than just points and prize money. It means a lot to me, and I know they're going to put the money to good use. Pledging money for every birdie and eagle he made during the full day event, along with his family's charity, beginning it. Foundation, matching donations made from businesses and individuals. Nearly $60,000 is being given to bushfire relief in Australia. You know, I feel lucky to be in a position to be able to do what I'm doing, and um, it's just such an easy decision to want to, to help people, really. But that's just the beginning. Once Leishman helped raise awareness, the PGA Tour and the President's Cup International team provided an additional $250,000 towards the relief efforts. You know, to be able to raise over a quarter of a million dollars to help help people, um, it feels pretty good. And let's not forget, the Get Again Foundation has served thousands of families here in the 757. So why escape on vacation when you can make such an impact at home? The winner of the Sony Open Hawaii, Cameron Smith. He's an Australian native too. Wow. He participated in the birdie pledge, so doing some good things for folks back in Australia. Oh, and what a significant number of money that they raised. Raising awareness, the PGA Tour gets on board, the President's Cup gets on board, the Leachman is good people doing a lot of good things. Absolutely. Yeah, it's great when they can lend their celebrity and have such an impact like that. Last word on weather. It is going to be foggy tomorrow morning, but uh, things will improve as we head to the afternoon. Scale of 1 to 10, tomorrow's the 6. We'll see you at 11.